Someone tells me you can see the future. Yes. Then please tell me, O oh wise one. Will Wrecker betray the Bad Batch? Hey, you're watching Axel Myth the Star Wars Guy here. The subject today is Bad Batch Episode 7, Battle Scars. I'm going to tackle this episode slightly different today, hopefully. See, this episode was slower paced and not much happened, but what did happen was so awesome and powerful. So, I suggest you watch this episode before this review, because I'm going to assume that you already have. So we'll start with the elevator pitch for this review. The Bad Batch are found by the Martez sisters' contact from the last episode, Captain Rex. Captain Rex is sort of trying to recruit the Bad Batch, but then he finds out that they haven't removed their inhibitor chips because of Record's constant headaches. They end up meeting Rex at a planet called Bracca, a trash planet full of broken Republic Star Destroyers. Before they're able to remove Wrecker's inhibitor chip, Wrecker turns on them. A small ominous chase ensues with Wrecker trying to kill Omega, and Wrecker's taken down by Captain Rex in the end. So apparently the Bad Batch have been working for Sid long enough to make eating this sort of ball snack type thing a tradition after successful missions. This part was sort of adorable, but I wish it played slightly more into Wrecker's turn. Like, maybe because of these things Wrecker hesitates, like Captain Rex did with Ahsoka. But it was so sweet to see Wrecker and Omega bond, even though it did put him more into Sid's debt. 20 boxes of those things. On top of their other bills, I wouldn't be very happy either. It was pretty cute to see Omega meet Rex for the first time. Not gonna lie, when she points out that he's a first generation clone because of the wrinkles that have started to form on his face, got a laugh out of me and my wife. I like the Bad Batch, and Omega definitely belongs with them, but I feel like it would be cool to see her go on adventures with Rex from time to time. And about Captain Rex, I was actually pretty surprised he was in this episode. I didn't think the Martez sisters would know him, I mean, Ahsoka surely would have told Rex about them at some point, but I thought it would have been a so this is what I've been up to conversation, and not really a these people I can trust with my life type of thing. But it's at least really cool to see him again. But doesn't this also contradict Star Wars Rebels a bit? The show just sort of made it seem like after the Clone Wars ended, Rex went to find Gregor and Wolf, took their inhibitor chips out, and then went on a retirement on that desert planet with their giant walker house. But apparently Rex is trying to find clones who didn't follow Order 66 and recruit them into fighting the Empire. And then it makes me wonder where they were in Star Wars Rebels. They were still a thing, though this story obviously hadn't been told yet. I just hope we get a satisfying answer and not just, well, they were working for Sid. It also makes me wonder why him and Ahsoka didn't just stick together throughout the years. If they were both on the run, they could watch each other's backs. It would be in character for them to do so, but right now it sort of feels a bit forced to fit into Rebels, where they allude that Ahsoka and Rex hadn't seen each other in years, though stayed in contact. There's also the subject of Planet Bracca. This planet has been seen before in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. It's where your character Cal Kestis starts in the game. I love that game. It was so nice to see that planet before the Empire really took it over, and in better weather conditions. Before I go much further, I'd like to take a moment to shout out to a popular Star Wars channel for information on some of the inhibitor chips workings, and also why Wrecker and Crosshair are the only ones who seem to be affected. I'd highly recommend watching Generation Tech's video on the subject. The link will be in the description below. Anyway, that leads us pretty suddenly into Wrecker's betrayal. It was something I saw coming since episode 3, but I obviously didn't know the outcome of this event. When Wrecker was sitting there and he grabs Tech's hand and says, get that thing away from me. I figured it was going to be too late, and then a few minutes later, he grabs Tech's arm again and says, Good soldiers follow orders. It was so chilling and so cool. It was really interesting to see him sort of dispose of the rest. This was a crazy scene. It was also pretty heart-wrenching to see Wrecker going after Omega with fear in her eyes while he's stomping around with the intent to kill everybody, to be saved by Rex just before he Hulk smashes Omega. I was honestly surprised that Wrecker would go down so easily to Rex's pistol blasters. Maybe this stun setting doesn't work like a taser, but I thought it would at least take two or three stun shots for him to go down. Which brings me to a problem I really noticed with this episode. I really felt that Wrecker was depowered for this episode. I've said this a few times already, but in the first episode, and their Clone Wars arc, this guy did a bunch of amazing feats of strength. This guy took down a baby Rancor even. He took down the Bad Batch easily enough, but I feel like he also went down a bit too easily. I guess I thought this episode could have spanned another one, like one stun shot wasn't enough, so they run away with Wrecker on their heels. Then they're forced to regroup and come up with a plan to trap Wrecker. Then they all use their stun weapons and keep blasting away at him until he finally falls asleep. 
How it actually happened felt a little anticlimactic for me. Though I will admit there was a lot more drama with the way that the episode did end. Anyway, they get Wreckers and Hibber to chip out, and he's still unconscious. So I honestly thought they were going to take this opportunity to kill him off. I don't know why I thought this, but maybe it could have showed how dangerous the surgery really is, as they are always saying how dangerous this is. But out of all the clones we see go through this, only one dies, and it seemed like he was already going to die without the surgery. But at the same time, I'm glad he's alive. It'll be good to see where his character goes. I'd also like to see arcs for Tech and Echo as well, where they all get their own episode to bond with Omega and see how they change her and how she changes them. The last thing I'd like to mention is the ending. They're being tracked by a guild that rules the planet, so it's probably what episode 8 will be about, and I'm really excited for it. I bet yeah that they're going to send Crosshair to take care of his brothers. I hope that they don't change him back though. I like seeing him as the antagonist of the show, and I hope that he's going to be used much more later in the show. That's all I have to say for this time. I hope this review was enjoyable and understandable. Sorry, I'm never really sure how to actually review a movie, but please tell me what you'd like to see. Do you like the play-by-play -play breakdown, or would you like to have the elevator pitch with my thoughts on particular parts of the episode? Feel free to tell me in the comments. Also, I'd love to hear what your opinion of this episode was, so please feel free to comment that as well. If you'd like to stay up to date with a series of reviews, please subscribe and hit the bell icon as well. It really helps the channel out, and I really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank you for watching. This has been Axel with the Star Wars Guy, and I'll catch you next time.